In the beginning of May 2021, I finished my 50th book that I wanted to read this year. The book was a biography on Karl Marx called Karl Marx, Greatness and Delusion by Gareth Stedman Jones. If I continue like this, I will have read 150 books by the end of 2021, which means that I'll have read 49 more books than last year. Every year my book count seems to increase by a substantial amount. Obviously, there is a cap to this, as I am not able to read 365 books a year, but it still intrigues me that I've been able to increase my book count by quite a lot in the last couple of years. So I wanted to share some tips on how I was able to read 50 books in about four months. First off, I have to say that I'm a university student, which means I read quite a lot for school already, and I include the books that I have to read for school in my book count. However, this isn't that much, taking about five books per semester. I do have a lot of free time between classes and studying, which I fill by reading more books. Obviously, I still forget things that I read or don't pay attention to the things that I'm reading or can't seem to focus on a particular book. But, you know, that's that's part of the journey. Continuing to grow with that, you know. So yeah, with that out of the way, I would like to share some tips on how I was able to read more. The first tip I would give you is kind of straightforward, and that is to remember to read the books that you want to read. If you don't need to read a book for a class or anything else, then just read the books you want to read. At least don't read the books you don't find meaningful. If you're 100 pages into a book and you're not feeling it, and it's 600 pages long, don't continue. Just just stop, put it away, maybe go back to it later, and go find another book that you'll find meaningful. Life is too short to read the books you don't find meaningful. Note that there is a difference between enjoying a book and finding a book meaningful. Some books that you'll read will not be enjoyable, but they will be extremely meaningful when you read them or when you finish reading them. The reading itself might not be enjoyable, but the fruits you pick up from your labor might be meaningful. When I was reading Capital by Karl Marx, I did not enjoy it one bit. That is one heavy book and boring book and is extremely badly written, in my opinion anyway. But it was very meaningful for me to read that because now I have a better understanding of the arguments that Karl Marx made, arguments I'm trying to refute, and you can only refute arguments you actually know exist. And you can only do that by reading the book. Obviously, I am not saying here that you shouldn't read books because you want to enjoy them. Reading enjoyable books can be very meaningful. Enjoyment and meaningfulness go quite hand in hand. For some books, however, the enjoyment is to be had after the reading instead of during the reading. The ideal, obviously, is to have a book that is enjoyable before, during, and after, and that is meaningful. And you should always be on the lookout for those books. However, those books are rare, and you will not always have those books at your disposal. If you if you actually read books that are meaningful to you on a personal level, then you'll actually read more because this will tire you less and will actually give you energy to continue reading more books. This also brings me to something else that I want to elaborate on, uh, maybe somewhere else, but you don't have to read the classics. If you don't want to read the classics, you don't have to. Most of the time, it's just about bragging rights anyways. I mean, who cares that you have read the Odysseus by Homer five times. No one. Don't let people lecture you on what you have to read. Just read what you find meaningful. Obviously, I want to take a little side note on this and say that the classics are classics for a reason. So it might be valuable and meaningful to actually dive in into those classics and see if they resonate with you on a personal level. However, don't beat yourself up if you haven't read Ulysses by James Joyce. Almost no one has. The second tip I would like to share is to learn how to speed read. There are many videos out there on how to learn how to speed read, so I won't dive into this. I just want to make a little side note. Just don't speed read every book. I mostly speed read fantasy novels or novels or non-fiction books that are easy to read because you can get a clearer image in your head. I don't do this when I'm reading philosophy, economics, 
politics or whatever. That, for me at least, that doesn't work. Personally, I feel that the more lighthearted works are the best works to speed read. I feel that speed reading is very useful when reading books that have a clear storyline and where the story is quite important. Fantasy novels like A Song of Ice and Fire and Lord of the Rings are good examples. I also use it for history books that have a clear line. Uh, for example, uh, the biography of Karl Marx has a, quite, a, quite a good line. If you read a fantasy novel or a biography for that matter, you don't need to remember every name, every context, every place, anywhere. Sometimes that is not important. For me, it's the journey you go through, which is perfectly capturable while speed reading. Speed reading philosophy or difficult books in general is something I would not recommend. I have tried this and for me at least, it doesn't work. I have to reread every sentence five times and that's not speed reading. Many times in philosophy or a non-fiction book, there's a certain chain of reasoning you have to go through and if you don't get the first step or the second step, you won't get the fourth or fifth step. Also, arguments are hard to conceptualize in your head while speed reading. It's hard to make a clear image out of arguments or philosophical texts. In my experience, going slower rather than faster here is better for the understanding of the texts. This brings me to my third tip. Don't care about how many books you've read. It's not so much about the number of books that you read, it's about how you understand the books that you read. This might seem contradictory when I'm trying to give you more tips on how to read more books, but actually putting out a number of books that you want to read can be pretty counterproductive. Say you want to read 52 books a year, that is one book a week, but there will be a week where you won't be able to finish one book. That's a problem because now the next week you have to read two books. Sometimes this might work, but most of the time you won't be able to finish two books. Then maybe you even skip another week, making you have to read three books the next week, or two books for two weeks, and before you know it, you're just in a downward spiral and you just give up on your goal. Uh, having a set number can be very intimidating, and we just want to be able to read more. If you just focus on reading every day, you don't really have the stress problem. Which brings me to my fourth tip, read every day and do this consistently. The goal is to make reading a habit, not to read 52 books. The goal is also not to read as much as you can every day. Just like how you should not care about how many books you've read, you should not care about how many pages you've read that day. This, paradoxically, helps you to read more. Don't make the goal that you should read X number of pages every day. Make the goal that you should just read every day. That means picking up the book, opening the page, and reading one sentence. That's it. If it is just a sentence or just a paragraph, that's okay. You've read that day. That's good. That's what we want. We want to make reading a habit. The goal is to incorporate reading into your being by making it a habit. The actual hardest part of reading is actually taking the book, opening it, and start reading. When you do that, you're all set. And before you know it, you'll be reading 10 pages out of a book. If you're interested in creating more habits, I would highly recommend Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's a very good book on how to create sustainable habits, and it helped me create my own reading habit as well. My final tip, which I can share with you for now, is that you should read multiple books at the same time. Previously, I talked about how you should read books that are meaningful to you but how sometimes difficult books can be very unenjoyable while reading, but very meaningful when you finish them. Now, sometimes it takes quite a long time to finish a book. If the reading is very difficult, it can be hard to maintain that motivation to continue that book. Some books can be 1000 pages of dense material, and sometimes you just want to break from that, and that's okay. Just like you can be serious all the time, you sometimes have to be a little bit lighthearted. And the same goes for books, and the same goes for series. You don't always want to watch a psychological drama. Sometimes you just want to watch The Office. Read different books, but preferably in a different medium or a different genre. This helps to divide the line of the books you're reading. I sometimes read four books at the same time. I read one physical copy of something I deem difficult, a philosophy work or something else. So I also read a physical novel, fiction book, 
whatever it is, not too serious. Then I also read an ebook, mostly lighthearted nonfiction or easy to read nonfiction, like a self help book or something else. And sometimes I listen to an audiobook as well. I mostly do this when I'm sporting. If I don't find a podcast I want to listen to, then I listen to the audiobook instead. I mean, sometimes you'll be struggling to read a book for three months. And if you just contain yourself to that book, you'll actually st skip days because you don't want to read that book. People might say that they mix up their books when they read more books. But this is more a case of inattentive reading than reading different books. So yeah, these are the tips I thought I could give to people who want to start reading more. At least those are the things that help me read more books. This will take time, a lot of time. But as you progress, it'll become easier and easier to read and read more books. That's the real goal, that you progressively become better in reading. Three years ago, I read six books that year. And I thought that was quite a lot and was patting myself on the back. The year after, however, I read 38 books. And then I thought, I've reached a peak. I cannot read more than that. It, it took me all my effort to read those 30 books in a year. Last year, however, I read 101 books with some time to spare. And now it seems I'll be able to do even more. And that's the power of making reading a habit. Habits work with exponential growth. If you take the time to really invest in it now, then you'll have the fruits of your labor in three years. The only thing you have to do is persevere and to continue doing the things that you find meaningful. Um, so yeah, with that, I would like to end this video. Thank you very much for watching. Now go read that book you always found meaningful and I'm glad you watched this. Thank you.